So I hope you know we can really now facing those huge issues, facing those uh, uh, you know the more uh, challenges that U.S. and China can really uh, you know work together on those uh, uh, most critical issues to the mankind, uh, to the whole world, uh, to the to the to the seven point five billion people because the number two, number one, and number two largest economy in the world have a moral responsibility to do that. So how can we really uh, improve on that? It was from 2019 to, tw to mid 2020. Um, we actually saw a literally 99% drop in US student visa issuance to Chinese students from, I think it was um, 80,000 to 800, well, approximately. That was the scale. At one point we we, we issued 80,000 visas, and then over the next 12 months, we issued 800. Some of that obviously was COVID, but a lot of it was also just a very a fundamentally different view under the Trump administration about the value or what they would have regarded as the lack of value uh, in in having students from China come to this country. What, what Neil, what you understand and what I understand, and I think what Henry understands, is that actually there's huge value and having students from all over the world come to this country and contribute to our research and development, contribute to uh, scholarship at universities, uh, contribute to uh, the development of new ideas and innovation, new companies. And um, the notion that by turning off that spigot and shutting that down, that that's good for America is just about as dumb an idea uh, in terms of uh, the modern uh, 21st century economy as I can imagine. And so to see it move back toward uh, a more normal level, at least in terms of Chinese students coming to the United States. And I certainly hope we'll see an analogous uh, upward tick in U.S. students getting back to China once the overall health situation allows for that. Uh, these exchanges are great for our countries and we need to increase them, not decrease them.